we now move to the next chapter in biology that is health organizations a very very easy chapter just a small chapter as such also one of the smallest chapter of your uh, syllabus uh, so health organizations basically these are those organizations these are those institutes of the world which are going to take care of the health of everybody in this earth so yeah it is those organizations which is taking care of the health of the people whether it be um, and it is worldwide it is not something related to only the small thing but yeah of course there will be some health bodies also locally available and then there will be one which will be nationally available and the one which is internationally available so accordingly there will be different health bodies who will be taking care of the health of the people around us so uh, first of all we need to understand the common health problems in india so we see that the health india is a very vast country in fact not only vast but it has got a varied kind of population and a varied kind of living habits you will have the biggest of the biggest cities over here like mumbai and delhi and places which are extremely crowded and has got a huge amount of um, you know population over there and there could be small towns also and there could be some villages and some completely rural area also so remote areas also so we see that the first thing is that india is a vast country it has a highly diverse geographical and climatic conditions its population is distributed in five types of habitats habitations first is big cities these are multi story but they are multi story buildings too many vehicles heavy burdened water supply and sewage systems some with lots of industries either inside the township or outside so these are those areas which has got a huge amount of population very very big buildings good amount of industry sometimes inside or in the outskirts of the city and all we having good amount of water supply and sewage system then there would be a small town slightly smaller than the big city the small town just a smaller version of this big city so that's just uh, slightly not so crowded but it is going to be there then comes the village area the village area is the one which will be having a small population which normally will be agricultural based and uh, or they may be having some kind of a dairies or poultry farms or uh, the uh, cottage industries that's are going on so there will be a village which will be specialized doing certain kind of activities uh, over there so that's why they will be you know of a similar kind of a nature thing like for example there are certain uh, villages in india which are very uh, good in pottery so you will get all the different pot kind of things or pot kind of uh, uh, articles the pottery articles which will be their uh, specialty of that thing we have got some uh, places in rajasthan which are good for the handicraft so they will be only doing the handicraft the all the people over there are good in handicraft so there will be village which will be related to that of course agriculture is also one of them remote areas tribal people mostly thriving on forests and forest products neither proper drinking water nor any medical facilities is available so these are the remote areas which are not in the direct contact with the people they are in very outskirts of that uh, even outskirt of the villages also in very far off from the villages also that's why they do not have a proper facility they do not have electricity sometimes they do not have any kind of medical facility nor drinking water so these are the remote areas which are normally not cater to or we are just very very far off and finally are the swam slum dwellers so slum dwelling uh, slums and uh, jogi jhopri are a common sight at all places especially on the outskirts of the big cities now in fact you will see the big cities you will get many 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 slum areas so slum areas are the one which are the most hazardous places in uh, the i think they are unhealthy unhygienic conditions prevail in them so these are the most you know the areas which are going to be worst affected in case of any kind of a infection and hence you have the air health health problems related to these uh, different kind of habitats is different habitats will have different kind of health problems so the health problems which you will see over here is the health problems differ in each kind of habitation however we may generalize them as follows the first one is food and water borne diseases so those diseases which are going to be caused by the contamination of the food and the water will be the food and water borne diseases so several diseases especially diarrhea gastroenteritis thyroid uh, the typhoid 
then dysentery are very common in areas deficient in proper water supply so where these areas where the proper water supply is not there the water is contaminated there will be lots of cases of the diarrhea and typhoid and dysentery and all which will be a common uh, disease over there at many places water from hand pumps and other sources are is contaminated so yeah they are having the water supply from the water pumps the water uh, the hand pumps but that water which is coming over is due to some other the reason contaminated uh, and it is causing the health hazards at certain places harmful minerals contained in the water obtained through wells or hand pumps cause health problems an untreated sewage or effluent from industries poured into rivers and other water bodies harm the people living alongside so yeah the another very big problem is that the water bodies which are present near the industries they are being dumped by the uh, industries the uh, the pollutants are being dumped into the water body and that water is being used by the villagers nearby and cause the uh, health hazard over there so that are the water and the food borne uh, diseases the next are the insect and air borne diseases so the one which are spread by the insects or the air is called as the air borne or insect borne diseases the public in general and especially the uneducated village folks are not conscious of the flies which alight on exposed food stuff and contaminate them see we don't in general we will not find the people to be so cautious, cautious that oh, hey, the flies are sitting on that particular thing so I should not be eating that particular thing we are just going and eating outside without thinking much and that particular thing is the main reason for the contamination of the food by the flies lack of general cleanliness leads to breeding of house flies mosquitoes and other insects which cause diseases so accordingly you see that the flies are going to be formed or are going to be uh, there uh, breeding places of these are going to be there uh, of house flies and mosquitoes and insects which will cause the disease uh, so now in this part they are given you certain things which are not in the syllabus but we can just understand for five minutes and that is what are the categories of health organizations in a country so every country will have its own kind of a health organization facilities so apart from the world health organizations we have got the other organizations which are the local uh, ones which are going to take care of the health of the people in uh, general so first one are the local bodies so local bodies are the ones which are going to uh, take care of the uh, health of the people and that is mainly the municipalities the municipal corporations and the town area communities which are going to take care of mainly uh, four things that is first is sanitation it is will see to it that the proper removal of the garbage and the disposal is taking place that is the first thing the first kind of the function of the local body that is the municipalities uh, the second is the supply of the safe drinking water they see to it that the, the water being supplied to the people is safe to drink uh, third is vaccination they see to it that the general vaccinations of which are, are the prominently like for example the polio so we are uh, all, we have almost eradicated the polio from our country by the means of vaccination which is provided to all these children uh, which are born in India so that's why yeah, the, uh, the pol from polio we are almost uh, free from polio uh, as on date so that is the uh, vaccination which you are going to have on a regular basis which is provided by the government and that is the municipality and finally is keeping the statistical records of the people the the birth certificate the death certificate all these are the are going to help the uh, government to know that how many people are uh, alive and what is the strength of that particular country uh, that particular place or how much amount of how many what is the population density of that particular place and accordingly what will be the requirement of the daily needs which are uh, available there so that is why the uh, municipality will be responsible for taking the getting the statistical record of the births and deaths of the people in living there and then there will be some national bodies the national bodies will be there which will be having different centers and they will be working under different kind of head so there will be one which will be specifically only for malaria or someone one will be for tuberculosis or dengue or leprosy and cholera so there are certain centers which work on the fall on these diseases 
and they take care of the uh, disease and they, that is called as a National Institute of Communicable Diseases which was earlier known as Malaria Institute but so these are certain kind of institutes which are a national body which work on the disease on particular disease throughout the country so that is about the national body now we come to the part which is part of the syllabus so very important and that is the international bodies of which are taking care of the health of the people so the international bodies there are two most important international bodies concerned with people's health and they are Red Cross, so the two international bodies are first one is Red Cross and the second one is WHO that is World Health Organization. Okay, so Red Cross and the WHO that is World Health Organization are the two international bodies taking care of the health of the people across the world so let's see what are the different activities and not other different functions of these things uh, in general so first thing red cross the red cross is a national as well as an international agency the main function of the red cross society is to perform activities which should prevent or remove human sufferings in peace time as well as the time of war so yeah these ones they initially came up as those particular people who were treating the soldiers who were injured during the war. So the main reason for the uh, generation of this particular institute, this particular kind of organization, Red Cross, was basically to help the soldiers in war. But slowly as the peace time started, these were uh, performing the uh, main function of performing the activity which should prevent or remove sufferings from at peace time as well as the time of war. So it formally founded in 1864. The emblem of the Red Cross is a red, cro a red colored cross painted with white background. So the Red Cross painted with a white background is the Red Cross car emblem. People belonging to the Red Cross can go to the battlefield and take care of the wounded soldiers, whether friends or enemies. Major activities of Red Cross are as follows. So let's see the activities of the Red Cross. First thing, to extend relief and help of, to the victims at any calamities, flood, fire, famine, earthquake, etc. So whenever there is any kind of a calamity, okay, any kind of a natural calamity, like or even not only natural, in a man-made calamity like wars. So any kind of flood, fire, famine, earthquake, if such a thing happens and the people are suffering, it is the Red Cross which is going to go over there to extend relief and help the victims of these calamities. The next is to procure and supply blood for the needy victims of war or other calamities. Yes, they are the ones which are going to supply blood to the victims who are affected in the calamity. So the victims are going to be supplied with blood which is going to be procured or are going to be managed by the Red Cross Society. The third is to extend all possible first aid in any accident. Yes, in case there is any accident then to support or to help the people in that in that accident, the they are going to give that uh, extend all the possible first aid. The first aid which requires to be given to the accident patient is going to be given by the or can be given by the Red Cross. Fourth, to educate the people in accident prevention. Yes, it will also help the people to educate themselves about the accident prevention. So in case or like they can also help you to understand that what they should be doing what should the people do in case of fire or in case of an earthquake what how they should protect themselves so they will be extending all the precautionary measures and the uh, prevention for accidents to arrange for ambulance services in all emergencies yes they have their own ambulances also which will be used for emergency services so they will provide as ambulance services for agency in all agencies Sixth is to look after maternal and child welfare centers. So 
they also have got their own institutes wherein they will be looking after the mother and the child so the maternal that is the pregnant female and the child welfare so, uh, so the initial uh, vaccination and the initial medical care which is required for the child in the early years of the child that are also provided by the Red Cross Society so Red Cross Society also helps the pregnant females uh, uh, and the child which is born Finally, the Indian Red Cross Society has also been engaged in training midwives. So midwives are basically those females who are there in the remote areas who are trained so that they can do the delivery of babies in the case of the pregnant females in that remote area. So midwives, uh, so that training to the midwives that they can help that particular pregnant woman to give birth to a child without any uh, kind of a, uh, complication that can be done with the help of the midwives. So the training of the midwives जिसको हम लोग हिंदी में दाईमा बोलते हैं, so training of the midwives, the दाईमा का जो training है, that also is being conducted in India by the Indian Red Cross Society. So these are the seven important functions of the or the activities what they what the Red Cross does. So the seven things what you see, you can understand it this way that the Red Cross is much more connected to calamities. Accidents and you can say child and maternal welfare. So these are the one which are connected to these three things: one, two, and three. Calamities के अंदर help करना, calamities के अंदर blood supply करना वगैरह. Accidents है तो actually इनको prevent करना, accident के time में help करना. चाइल्ड का ध्यान रखना, वैक्सीन करना, मैटरनल वेलफेयर, मिडवाइफ्स का ट्रेनिंग, एवरीथिंग इज डन अंडर रेड क्रॉस। सो दिस आर द थिंग व्हिच आर डन अंडर रेड क्रॉस बाय द रेड क्रॉस एक्टिविटीज व्हिच आर डन बाय द रेड क्रॉस। नाउ द नेक्स्ट वन, सो रेड क्रॉस क्रॉस uh, is 8th May is the Red Cross Day. 8th May is the Red Cross Day. Uh, that was uh, yeah. Now uh, wrong use of Red Cross. This Red Cross emblem is very often used by Hospitals, uh, ambulances, doctors and nurses for quick identification but legally it is wrong only the Red Cross Society units can use it. So uh, you can see that many times the doctors use that Red Cross on their uh, cars and all so it is no longer used, it is no longer allowed, it is only used by people because it's an emblem of the Red Cross and not of the doctor. The doctor has got their own emblems now. The next one is the WHO that is the World Health Organization which was established in 1948 is a specialized agency of the United Nations organization. So the UNO has generated a particular organization which takes care of the health of the people in the world and that is the WHO that is WHO World Health Organization which was established in 1948. So what's the reason of the formation? The reason of the formation of WHO members countries of the UNO focused on the need for creating an international body to look after the health problems of people of the world. This is this was particularly felt in the field of research of the cause and cure of diseases. See, it was necessary that if some people or some particular country has come out with the medicine which could help the cure of certain kind of diseases, it should be imparted that particular knowledge should be imparted to other countries also so that the people all around the world would be able to benefit from those medicines so this is the exact idea behind the uh, formation of the world health organization the world health organization was formed so that the uh, they can look after the problems of the health of the people around it and also particularly in the field of research uh, and uh, wherein the cures for the medicine or cures for the sorry diseases can be given to the different countries combined. So the combined efforts in this direction were to be give benefit and faster results. The poor and developing countries were to benefit quickly. So they wanted that the poor and the developing countries should get benefited from the researches what the bigger com bigger countries have done so that the people in general 
not to talk about a country but the people in general should be benefited and they should be able to cater to the uh, or they should be able to fight with the diseases easily so that was the main reason for the development of the or the formation of this who world health organization by the united nations organization uno WHO has got six region offices in the world, including one in Delhi. Yeah, we should be proud that we have one of the uh, WHO head office, one of the uh, offices or region offices in Delhi. But of course, each regional office works for its member countries. Uh, so its headquarters are located in Geneva. Member states of WHO are bound to bound by the international sanitary regulation to send in all its relevant information about the internationally notifiable diseases malaria and smallpox are two such notifiable diseases so they see to it that the member countries see to it that they are giving all the informations related to the diseases which are there in their country or the member or the other countries to be given to the who so that they can be helping the people to eradicate these things and this is one of the reasons that smallpox has been completely eradicated from the world because of the good work of the who so what are the main activities of who first thing to collect and supply information about the occurrence of diseases of epidemic nature such as cholera, plague, typhoid, yellow fever, smallpox, etc. So first thing is that collect and supply information. To get the information about the different kind of diseases which are spreading as a uh, epidemic. So what are the, it means in case there is any chance of formation of an epidemic in particular country or in a particular range of countries then they should know this particular so the collecting the information and working on it is the main function first function the second is to promote and support projects for research on diseases yeah there are so many researches which are going to going on on a regular basis on a daily basis researches that we've done on cancer on aids and so many diseases so these is even the one which is coronavirus so they are going to be funding those particular diseases uh, the uh, funding those researches which are done against this disease so the project of research on diseases is being uh, taken care of by the who the third is to supply information on latest developments about the use of vaccines, cancer research, nutritional discoveries, control of drug addictions and about health hazards of nuclear radiation. So you can see that apart from this you also are the WHO gets the latest development of the variety of vaccines which are being created. So that is why always it is now no longer happening that if somebody some uh, I mean, if somebody is staying in America gets a particular vaccine for uh, cancer and the people who are staying in India may not be able to get it. No, it is no longer that because the vaccines have been if it is being developed in any of the uh, country then it is automatically being uh, means it is being sent to the people over here and uh, accordingly all the people in the world are able to get the benefit of the vaccine which is being generated hence why there was the cancer research or research also nutritional discovery some kind of discoveries which is helping the people to get the proper nutrition so that nutritional discoveries are being uh, given out control of drug addiction yeah very important see nowadays people uh, are very much affected by the drugs uh, addiction to the drugs so drug addiction is a very big problem so how to control that drug addiction and also the health hazard due to nuclear radiation is being taken care of by the who fourth one to to suggest quarantine measure isolation of patients to separate to to prevent disease spreading of disease to others this is the best example what we see presently in coronavirus the quarantine measures that is what we are doing presently staying locked down the home uh, everybody locked down at home what is that that is nothing but quarantining yourself in an area so that we are not spreading the disease or we are not allowing the disease to spread across and that is why the quarantine measures so this quarantine measures what needs to be taken what kind of quarantine measures to be taken how much quarantine is required everything is being uh, being decided by the world health organization Fifth one to lay pharmaceutical standards for important drugs to ensure purity and size of the dose. Yeah, the next is the pharmaceutical standards for important drugs. It should be, it is seen that many drugs 
if taken like for example you cannot buy any kind of an antibiotic without the prescription of a doctor so that particular kind of rules which seems to be set up to the pharmaceutical or the amount of dosage which can be allowed to be given so all these are also some kind of a, uh, you know the uh, rules which are laid down by the uh, WHO that is the pharmaceutical standards of important drugs to ensure and also ensure purity and size of the dose. Yes, what is also what is there should be the purity and the size of the dose required is also formulated by WHO. Finally, to organize campaigns for the control of the epidemic and endemic local diseases and widespread diseases. One example of endemic disease is the simple goiter due to iodine deficiency. So this is all to organize campaigns. So they also organize campaigns in the areas where they know that this is an area which is like, for example, if you see the Himalayan uh, uh, area, we see that there because the water uh, has got the deficiency of sodium, the, the, the uh, people are having the deficiency of sodium and that's why they are suffering from simple goiter. So they organize campaigns in such areas to we identify such areas and organize campaigns over there so that the people can get knowledge about this particular thing and accordingly they can take some substitute which could automatically remove the deficiency of the sodium in their body and they can be free from such disease. So you can see that the processes over here, the main activities what the WHO is doing is the common health related and disease related. So the common health and disease related stuff so if you identify the two means you, there's no need to get confused about the two activities here the activity is only related to those which are going to be like a calamity there is something which is natural calamity accidents वगैरह कुछ हुआ यानी कुछ खराब हुआ तो इनका काम है पर कुछ खराब नहीं हुआ है right पर disease या of course खराब नहीं यानी like corona वगैरह जो भी हुआ है वो खराब हुआ है but here it is not the work of the Red Cross, it will be the work of work of World Health Organization to give us the examples of the quarantine measures and the drugs to be taken or the vaccine to be taken. So that is going to be taken care of by the World Health Organization. So the World Health Organization is going to be the one which is going to take care of the general health of the people related to the diseases, related to the spread of the diseases, related to the vaccination of the diseases or related to the prevention of the diseases and related to the pharmaceutical standards which are laid down for the uh, prescription of the medicines and the drugs. So this is what is there about the WHO. Right, so you can easily identify them both. So there is no need to confuse yourself. Red Cross like that, it is related to accidents and calamities. Whereas disease, yeah, uske spread ki sab se baat hai, so it is going to be WHO. So this was about the chapter, uh, world, the health organization, a very small and uh, easy chapter. Okay, so that is the end of health organization.